guarding yourself against identity theft and fraud is is very very key. And I joke around that 20, 25 years ago, you know, I was in the Navy, and and the number one thing we gave everybody as we went around was our social security number. Mm-hmm. Every time you needed anything, you were like, okay, identify yourself. It's your social. You know, da 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 da. They use a different number today. Thank goodness. But especially the elderly, you know, 40 years ago when they grew up, they didn't have to deal with this. That's right. It's on a whole new level today. It's, it's a very different world. And that's why a lot of people get scammed. You're listening to The Successful Bookkeeper with your host, Michael Palmer. Listen each week as inspiring guests share their secrets of success to help you increase your confidence, work smarter, and build a business you love. This episode of The Successful Bookkeeper is brought to you by purebookkeeping.com, the proven system to grow your bookkeeping business. Welcome back to the Successful Bookkeeper Podcast. I am your host, Michael Palmer, and today's show is going to be an interesting one. Our guest is a tax attorney and owner of Guardian Tax Law, Hubert Johnson. Welcome to the show. Glad to be here. Well, it's good. I'm glad to have you. And, you know, it is at this time, a lot of people are talking about tax. Uh, I, I guess people talk about tax all throughout the year from your perspective, but uh, before we get into some of the things you know about that, please tell us about your career journey leading up to this point. So I've been doing tax law for 15 years. Um, some of the things I've done in the process is I taught graduate tax law at Baruch College in New York. I've co-written a couple books on the topic. I've appeared in lectures and seminars across the country. I've appeared in other podcasts as a tax expert as well. And I currently have my own TV show on a small station in Texas where I talk about uh, taxes every morning from seven to eight. Wow. So an hour at once a week? Uh, Monday through Friday. Every day you do an hour of tax television. Like I said, I'm a talker. Wow. <laughs> oh, There's so goodness. much to cover. And you we might have to have, have series stories. Of- episodes here. Uh, that yeah. That's, I mean, and that's maybe for people that, that don't know, let's maybe get into a little bit of that. You know, that's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of content, a lot of your time talking about tax. What, what, what is it that you find that you talk a lot about when you're doing these shows? I'm curious. Well, today I talked about identity fraud. Okay. Which is a huge issue. It's it's growing. The IRS is trying to combat it. Um, and I, I've had plenty of clients that have gotten burned by it. So we talked about how to avoid it. Um, it again, you have scammers using social media now. They're, they're reaching out. They'll call people. We talked about how to distinguish and determine if it's actually the IRS or state taxes, if it's legitimate or not. Going to the source, verifying who it is. And, and I can get rolling here and just go. Yeah. But, um, I there, there's so much to cover and yeah. what to do when your identity is actually stolen. It's horrific what happens to people. And I've even had people that weren't the victims per se, but they were in the chain of a mon- money laundering schemes. And the, they were, the FBI has investigated, people are already being prosecuted and jailed. And they were caught in the middle of it going, oh, what do I do? Wow. Well, you know, it, it is interesting, and I mean, this is great. I love it, and I, I imagine you'll be a regular guest here because you, you've you got, that's just one area. That's a whole episode, I'm guessing. Um, that was this morning's episode. It, yeah, and so I wouldn't have thought that that would have been the first thing to come up when we're talking, you know, tax attorney, your, your firm's about tax, but yet we're, we're probably talking about a whole bunch of different topics. And I don't want to skip over this one. I do want, actually want to talk about it because I, I actually have, there's someone in our community who recently had, I don't know that it was necessarily identity theft, but it was some, some kind of fraud where they, she had invoiced the customer for 30, 30, three grand. Mm-hmm. He sent an, a, an, a transfer, a pay, he paid 33 grand. 
And then he got back. He said, I overpaid you. Refund me the 30 grand. This is, a, this is an old trick. I had somebody try to do this with a check. They sent me a check for like more than what they were supposed to. And they said, hey, can you just wire me the difference? And, you know, I was like, well, it's like, it was like written in crayon. It was that bad. But um, it's it like, guys, you know, an inkjet for a print, for a check. Come on, guys, you can do better. Uh, but this, this lady, this is like online, you know, legit sent the money and then went after, uh, it was through a, a, a payment processor and then the payment processor refunded the 30. So it, it was like she she had given him 30 grand and now they were coming to her, the processor was coming to her for 30 grand. So she she was asking our community, like, what do I do? And I, it's like, who, who, you know, call the authorities. And she just kept getting like, it's like, oh, you know, no, no results, no, no traction. Tragic. It's a lot of money. So report, report, report. I repeated that often this morning. File a police report, go to the FBI, DOJ, um, report it with your state attorney general. And the more you report it, the more you look like an innocent party. And again, if so, she paid, she did not send the 30000 to them that they were requesting, did she? She did. She did. She wired that money to this person. Yeah, and it's always, we're paying through a separate processor where they can then contest the balance and pull it back, but then she wires the money to them, and that money's probably long gone. Long gone. And now the, the, and now the pipe bent processor is coming after for the other 30000 right? That's right. So it's a double whammy. I mean, she has to contest it with the payment processor. She and, needs to call and, you, and, I'm thinking. No, actually, that's not a case I would take, but we would okay. steer in the right direction. She needs to talk to a civil attorney, someone that probably doesn't uh, deals with consumer um, transactions. Okay, but if she reached so I, out I would to you, to, a to your firm, civil you, attorney. you could refer her to someone that you that would work. I mean, that, that's half the battle sometimes is finding somebody who, you know, it's like, oh, I need someone to help me. Who can help me? It, that in itself is is a massive problem. It, it, you know, there's there's good attorneys, there's less good attorneys. I'm sure people who know what they're doing, people who say they know what they're doing, but don't. So it's a it's a cat. It, it's definitely a a really challenging situation for anyone to go through something like this because of the time, the emotional costs, you know, the fear, all of those things that, that go on. And, and as well, it's like she's out 30, someone's coming after her now for another 30. Stressful. Yeah. And another fun twist on this, and when it's people take money, and this is what I often see, is that people will take money out of retirement accounts, they'll, they'll cash out savings, et cetera. These are taxable events. I've had two cases, one in New York, one in San Francisco. One was over a million dollars. The other one was around 500000 They took this money out send it to the scammers, and now they get to pay taxes on it. Wow. So in both cases, we had to deal with the state and the IRS, and uh, we were able to do an offer and compromise for each of them and settle for you know, 10% with New York. And with the IRS, I think we settled for just a couple hundred dollars, but on hundreds of thousands of tax debt as a result of them being scammed and losing all their money. So like you said, it's often a double whammy here where wow. they – they lose the money and then taxes come or someone else is coming after them due to the damage caused by these fraudulent scams. Wow. That's incredible. And, and now, would you say that these things are on the uptick? I mean, you said like there's... Yeah. We got AI now. The the the, uh, the the fellow that used an inkjet to send me, he's got ChatGDP. He can, you know, he's got AI that'll help him figure out how to do this better and fool me. So I went to a tax conference last summer in uh, San Diego at USD. It was excellent. They had um, top representatives from the IRS, from their white collar division, from their criminal prosecution that all spoke about this. Because it is such a huge and growing problem, a lot of it is very sophisticated and they're getting better. And a lot of it is being supported by foreign governments. A lot of it's suspected to be coming from China, where they're out of the reach of prosecution here in the United States. But 
it, it is a growing problem. It's only going to get worse. So that's why I talk about it so much, even if it's not direct benefit to me. Guarding yourself against identity theft and fraud is is very, very key. And I joke around that 20, 25 years ago, you know, I was in the Navy and, and the number one thing we gave everybody as we went around was our social security number. Mm-hmm. Every time you needed anything, you were like, okay, identify yourself. It's your social, you know, da 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 da. They use a different number today, thank goodness. But especially the elderly, you know, 40 years ago when they grew up, they didn't have to deal with this. That's right. It's on a whole new level today. It's it's a very different world. And that's why a lot of people get scammed. Wow. So there's there's scams. There's like where people are are coming in and, and asking for information like this situation where she was scammed. Th- then there's like the actual theft. They they've actually started dealing as you with your information. How how do you start? Like, what is some of your advice to protect yourself from identity theft? I mean, it's a big. There's a lot of information. There's it's like phones and this, applications online, everywhere you go, past data, information. I mean, it, it, it's mind-boggling. So I'm a little jaded in that your information's out there. There's been so many breaches and hacks of government information. The IRS, especially the IRS, has gotten hacked so many times. And I think I, I posted an article that came out last Friday where um, some watchdogs have ripped the IRS apart for not following good procedures with vendors, with other people that were denied access, denied security clearances to work with people's financial information, but still had it. And so multiple problems with the IRS. It's, It's such a large, and unfortunately, it's so big, it's very inefficient. Um, So your information can get hacked. And the number one thing is be very careful who you're giving information to. So if someone's contacting you through social media, it's a scam. The government will never reach out to you and ask for payment through social media. They will never ask you to pay on the spot. They will always ask. You can always ask for their information, verify who you're talking to, pay through reputable sources. So you go to irs.gov, you go to the State Department of Revenue or Taxation, and you can go directly to their website. Don't go to a website that someone directs you to. And if you're ever concerned, you can always take a breath, contact a tax professional that can verify if this is an actual debt or not. And I can I can sniff it out very quickly because we get so many. Um, we review tax letters for free because it is such a hu- pro- huge problem. And we'd rather make sure people don't get scammed. Yeah, that's great. What a, what a great uh uh, service for people, and you know, it's it's one of those things that as I'm, as I'm sitting here, I know myself. I've been, you know, people have attempted to defra- defraud me, access my bank account. You know, fortunately, the banks seem to get wind of these things and shut things down, which is which is which is great. But you know, I used the example of the the one in the mail. That was just one where it actually came to me in physical. I had physical hand. I had uh, lots of other people try the same thing where I'm like, yeah, yeah, I got this one. I've, <laughs> I've seen this one before, buddy. Uh, but, yeah. you know, family, friends, on the phone, in the line of the bank, going to get money out. And then, you know, literally, they, so she was like, so a bank manager walked by and looked at her and said, you look stressed. Is everything okay? And, and literally, she was that close to like sending money. This was uh, a family oh. member that they're just such nice people and they believe things and it must Trusting. just happen so much out there that it's it's um, it, it's unbelievable. So watch where we're giving the information. The information's out there. Changing passwords, Anybody's, changing identification, like yeah, all that kind of don't stuff. Don't give any of that. If someone's asking for immediate payment, that's a huge red flag. Go to your bank, buy gift cards, any kind of payment outside of the ordinary be very, very wary. When it comes to taxes, you could always walk into an an IRS office or a state office and make a payment directly there where you get an immediate receipt. Any payment online should be directly through their website where you get an immediate electronic receipt for your payment. So you have to go to the source. You can call them um, the best time. And this is a huge nugget that, out there. When people call the IRS, they're horrible to get a hold of. The best time to call is between 5 and 7 p.m. They're open until 7 p.m., depending on your time zone. And that's the best time to call because most people aren't calling 
can call them, say, what are my balances? Do I even owe? And they'll go through your account and explain it to you. Um, and if you're too intimidated, you can always reach out to a tax professional to help you out. But I uh, call between five and seven. Um, later on the week is always better, but that's the best way to get a hold of. Beautiful. You know, it's almost to the point where it's like, assume that it's fraud. You know, and I've kind of got that way myself with phone calls. I mean, I don't even answer my my phone anymore. Um, but I assume that someone's, even when they're legit, I'm like, you, know, you called me, you're a fraud. Like, oh, you're, you're, you're trying to scam me. And then it always ends up with, I'll, if I'm going to, even emails nowadays, if it's about money, if it's about go access your account or we change stuff, something that's causing me, like oh. I've done something wrong or something's broken, I don't even click on the link. I just go to the website and I check it. That, like it's like, okay, it's uh, an example, it might be PayPal or, or banking something. I just go log into the bank and it's like, if there's a notice there, then that's, that's what I'm looking for. So it's just become almost assuming that that someone is fraudulent versus assuming that someone like back, like you said, 60 years ago, people were, you know, they, they were less fraud, maybe more trustworthy experiences, those sorts of things. Today, not so much. And it's not just here. It's not just people here. These are organized. A lot of these are criminals, but you said verify the source, go to the source. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And um, one of the big things, if, if um, we talk about identity fraud, so if someone starts using someone's identity to access open bank accounts, to file tax returns, and they'll go in and change information, you have to, if you suspect any of that, contact the IRS, contact the state, again, report, report, report. And they'll take you a lot more seriously if you file the police report, if you file the report with the DOJ, with the state attorney general. And you go in and then you can put a lock on your account with the IRS. Now you're going to have to verify it. You're going to have to get all your documentation and walk it in and prove it up. And it takes at least a year to do that. Wow. But once they give you a specific PIN, it makes it harder for you to file your tax returns every year. You lose a lot of the conveniences, but you protect yourself from future tax fraud. Mm. Wow. And it, Another big thing I talked about is a, a um, form of fraud, incorrect 1099s and W-2s. So this happens a lot. You mentioned someone, you know, a business, you know, was a vendor. They paid them three, you know, they owed them 3000 overpaid them. But issuing 1099s and W-2s incorrectly, and sometimes it happens. It's just an error. But you need to get in there and fix that right away, especially with your employer or whoever you're working with. If they're honest and they'll, they'll make that adjustment. You can always contest those with the IRS, but it's not easy. It's difficult to do. But I've, I've seen people get 1099 for double their income. So claiming they, you know, someone made over 100000 and then they got two W-2s, same place, and uh, we're still fighting it. And it, it'll eventually get reversed, but it's, it's getting it in front of someone to take a reasonable look at it and say, this is not right. We need to make this adjustment it is a lot harder than it should be at the IRS. There's lots there. There's lots there. So I'm glad you brought that up. It's a, a valuable piece. I, I, I think uh, we likely can't speak enough about it. And and as well, our our listener right now deals with small business owners, right? That are likely Absolutely. very susceptible to fraud. And who better than the, the the bookkeeping business owner to educate? their clients and make sure that they have a piece of their engagement with them to make sure that they're helping, helping them protect against this kind of fraud. Echoing the same things that you're saying right now is a valuable service to, to clients because, I mean, they have money in their accounts. They have their, you know, they're a target, I would imagine. Absolutely. Especially elderly, um, I mean, people that are you know, older that... They're more susceptible to these kinds of frauds as well. And, and I think as a bookkeeper, if you see this, and, and the way I consider our firm, we're, we're very narrow on what we do. We focus on tax debt collections almost exclusively, but we still provide outside services. We refer people to other professionals and uh, we work, use networks so we can refer people to CPAs and bookkeepers across the country. And we're always looking for good referral partners. But um, 
We also try to provide a service to the community. And so talking about identity fraud, talking about other issues that affect people financially, I think it is, it's important to give back to the community and, and help people out. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And uh, learn as much as you can and, and make sure you're educating. And this is one area that it's going to happen. It's going to happen more and more. So yeah. having knowledge and imagine getting to your website, getting to some of your content that you're putting out there would be a great place to start. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll have some links, of course, in the, in the show notes. Now, you did mention your, your main staple of work that you do. Let's maybe talk, t- tell us a little bit about that. Uh, help, help me understand it. So bookkeepers, and we refer to bookkeepers a lot because people come to us all the time and they haven't filed for 10 years. They haven't filed for five years. I had someone in our office, they own a business, they ran into some issues, got frustrated and didn't file for 10 years with the IRS. They have a family, you know, but now they want to buy a home. They want to get straight with things and they can't without getting things straightened out. Mm-hmm. So that's why we refer out to bookkeepers, tax preparers, CPAs, get all that work done, get them compliant. But more important than ever, and this is very important for bookkeepers in particular, it is more important than ever that you are regularly engaging your clients, staying on top of their books so that you can do quarterly reports. Most small businesses do not do that. They just, you know, the box, shoe box of receipts, they shove it at their bookkeeper towards the end of the year and say, That's figure right. it out. Big change happened in 11, November of 2023 estimated tax payments. The IRS is being very aggressive about that. Did you hear about the increase on that? No, please, sure. Um, If you don't pay estimated tax payments, the penalty historically was between 1% and 2%. Eh, Most people just said, it's not that big of a deal. I'd rather hold on to my money. They just increased it to 8%. Wow. So if you're not making estimated tax payments and you owe $10,000, you just paid the IRS another $800. If it's $100,000 that you owe and you just normally pay it at the end of the year, now you're paying an extra eight grand. So if you don't pay based on their estimated, so it's like we want that money quarterly, is that what you're saying? Quarterly throughout the year. Yeah, so 25, 25, 25, 25 25 on the 100,000 example. I owe 100,000. I'll pay at the end. I'll keep it in my bank. But now... They want 25 every single quarter, and if you don't, you're going to pay 8% on that, which before it was 1%. Correct. Wow. 1% to 2%. It was minor. Most people ignored it, and it just jumped up to 8%. So Cash flow is king. <laughs> they need cash yeah. flow. <laughs> For the Why? government, they want this. And this is the number one people reason I think most – or one of the number one reasons that business owners owe – is because they don't know what's happening with their business. It's seasonal. They, they kind of have an idea of what's going on, but I'm sure you've asked or talked to small business owners, and we see this all the time, how much are you really making? Is your business yeah. profitable? They have no idea. They have no idea. No. They have no idea. They don't know. But regular, at least quarterly bookkeeping and profit and loss statements will help them keep informed, help them pay estimated tax payments that actually match what's happening in their business because the IRS will go off of 90% of the prior year's taxes to calculate estimated tax payments. So if you're making more money and you're paying based off of the previous year taxes, you're fine. You just are going to have a tax bill to pay by April 15th. And again, just get that paid, make sure you're on top of it. Um, I, I, we joke around that listen to us first I would much rather people not become our clients. <laughs> right. the problem, when, when problems are happening, when you're scared and, and things are hitting the fan, that's when you need to call us and we'll absolutely help you out. But I would much prefer that people avoid needing a tax attorney. If, if something's wrong, if you need a tax attorney. Yes. Lots of things that can be done to avoid ending up talking to you. And uh, you're a very nice person. So maybe they can talk to you about other things. <laughs> But we don't want them talking about the tax. Now, this is interesting because there's that's such a value, great value proposition for bookkeepers, especially, right? I mean, accountants, uh, they're you're doing planning and these sorts of things. This is like this just increased the demand 
for bookkeeping services because yeah. there's a, the cost to not doing regular bookkeeping services just got very expensive. And yeah, I will they should absolutely be promoting this. Yes, and I will actually give a plug to Profit First Professionals, which is uh, a lot of our listeners know about it, have have participated in it. A book called Profit First, which is basically a percentage based. So they do distributions from your from your sales to various. Oh, we got the. You probably. Have I the have the book there. around here somewhere. There you go. Profit first. Mike Michalowicz will uh, yeah. be very happy that you've got a book there somewhere in the back. Um, be another great podcast to, to to get on or their show actually. If you haven't, been I didn't on say it I read it all, but I have it. I've started on it. Okay, great. Well. <laughs> The the long and I mean the short of it I won't go into the long but the short of it is distribution. So you every single uh, quarter they're actually doing distributions to various accounts of the company and tax would be one of them. So it's it's actually aligned completely with the way, for, with an optimal way and as well based on this new implication from the IRS just increases the the need for that because. People often treat cash like it comes in, I can use it for something. But then they end up in a problem where they don't actually, like you said, they don't know what they're making. They don't know if they actually made that money. Whereas you start doing distributions and putting those, that, that money into accounts, it's not being used up for other purposes. So a couple of, and I mean, bookkeeping services add the service of uh, Profit First where you're, you're helping clients do these distributions I mean, now you're in a position where you're really not going to end up talking to to you around having these kinds of issues. So, but their clients would have issues. What are some of the other big yeah. ones that people muck up that that uh, bookkeepers would be maybe even involved or, or would be able to help business owners not end up talking to you? Well, estimated tax payments is such a huge one, but having their books put together other big issue I see from small businesses is payroll. And you you do not want to owe payroll taxes for what the average business owner. It it just feels like another tax. And in essence, it is, but it's a tax on labor. The IRS treats unpaid payroll taxes like you're stealing from your employees. They, they treat it like theft, and they will treat people like they're criminals, business owners trying to make a living, trying to survive with the bad economy, et cetera. And so when, when things get really tight, it's easy to not pay payroll taxes. It gets businesses shut down. I have seen the IRS padlock businesses, no joke, because of payroll taxes. It can create such a hole very quickly. And it's one of the few taxes that won't stay with your EIN. The IRS can assess half of the payroll, unpaid payroll taxes to the business owners and any responsible parties that include secretaries, anybody that had any kind of decision-making regarding getting payroll taxes paid. It's very nasty. Your clients do not want to go there. Um, If you do have any issues, I would get ahead of it because the penalties are, are very nasty when it comes to payroll taxes. Wow. So make sure your clients are on top of that. If they have any kind of employee issues, get it addressed. Get ahead of it. Wow. That's another another big one that bookkeepers can play an impact now. Would they be, if they're involved in that, and I mean, that, that, that might be a little bit of a sticky point. If I'm a bookkeeper and I'm working and I'm helping them with their payroll, do I now become, and I made a mistake, do I become part of that? Yeah, so the clause. Well, you don't become out. responsible if you make a mistake because the owners are still in charge of it. But um, true story, I had a uh, someone call and it had quite a few employees. It was a security company and their payroll company, you know, one of the big ones, I won't mention who, um, made a mistake and stopped making their payroll. And they didn't realize that they had all this extra money in their accounts that was supposed to be going to payroll taxes and very soon it was over $250,000. So I got involved. We stopped the collections. They had a revenue officer sign in the case, which is never pretty. But I had to go through and go through the personal financial information of all three owners. We had to do interviews with the IRS. It was assessed. We stopped it as long as the business handled it. But again, if you don't do it right, the IRS will not only go after the business, but after their personal assets 
of whoever is held responsible. Wow. So as a bookkeeper, not all bookkeepers handle payroll. If you do, make sure they're on top of it. Number one rule, if you can't make your payroll, don't pay your employees. That's how serious it is that they treat it. That's their standard. Wow. So, wow. so um, the, the pay, pay the government before you pay your employees. Or at the same to, time. Make, make sure time. Yes. if you can't cover payroll and the payroll taxes, don't pay the employees. Um, and that's that's tough. That's a tough pill to swallow. Yeah. But you have to, like with the, 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 the different accounts that you have, if you don't have enough money, you've got to decide where can you cut, make those decisions and make informed decisions so you're not put in that situation where it's happening and you're not aware of it. So bookkeepers, if you do see that, raise the red flags, tell them how serious this is and it can affect them personally, not just the business, but if they're using outside payroll service, I would check in, just make sure everything's right. Do your clients an extra service, go a little bit above and beyond. And if they're using a large company, you know there are better ones out there. And there's right. some of them that are worse than others. But if they are having issues, I would just kind of touch base with them every now and then. Is this being handled correctly? Do you know this is being done right? Okay. And, and some of times, a lot of times they'll do just fine. But I see a lot of problems come in where they, they rely on someone to trust someone and then when it blows up, things get nasty. That's great. So you're, I've seen you're, lawsuits fly too. That's, yeah, the, the cost of that's not just the penalties that you'll have to pay. You'll have to pay someone like yourself to help n- navigate all of this. The cost is just... It's one of those things. And it's like you say, it's a tough pill. But the other pill to swallow is going to be the one where you don't swallow the pill and you're paying legal fees, having uh, your, your you know, assets perhaps locked or seized. I mean, the cost of that is, is catastrophic. That doesn't mean it's all going to be horrible news. Um, I had a case where a CPA was having health issues. Not really his fault, but... W-2s did not get submitted for a company. And when and that's a huge penalty. They got hit, I think it was around $360,000 in penalties for a small, a small company. So I went in, they had a revenue officer signed. Um, again, things were assessed personally, but we were able to, to limit that. We, the business was able to handle it. We went through, did an abatement, made sure everything was filed. We did everything correct, corrected everything. And in the end, we got a, they got a refund of everything they had paid in about $97,000. Wow. So that, again, you can, it can save your shirt. You know, again, I'm, when I'm, we're dealing with payroll and complicated issues, it's not cheap to get tax representation, but it can absolutely be worth it if done right. Yeah, absolutely. That's kind of what I was alluding to when trying to find an attorney is that the cost of a, a great attorney is much less than a bad one. Um, every time. Well, <laughs> almost. <laughs> and it's not just the cost. I have a lot of my competition, you know, some of the big firms out there that do horrible work, and I charge frequently half of what they do because, you know, my, in the tax debt resolution honestly does not have the greatest reputation because of it. So uh, look at the reviews, check out who you're talking to, and communication is key. So if you, as, as a bookkeeper, you need a team around you that you can communicate with, have an open dialogue. And for us, when we refer casework out, um, if people don't communicate well with us, we tend to refer to somebody else. And we'll right. let them know, look, we can't get a hold of you. We need information. If you take months to respond to us, we'll send that. Uh, you know, We'll send them work elsewhere. But you need great communication, not only with the representative, but with the client. And that's how, that's what we can do the most for cases and you'd be surprised how many times people hire us and then ghost us. Yeah. Communication is absolutely key towards for a successful case. Yeah, absolutely. And, and what, what, why do you think they, they ghost you? What, what's, why is that? Well, a lot of times they think once they hire someone, they're done. The problem is solved. Problems, oh, right. They're responsible for it. A lot of people that get in these problems are natural procrastinators. So right. sometimes they put themselves in this situation. A lot of times they don't see a result. Um, True story, I was working at a larger firm where I cut my teeth in the industry and 
we were trying to resolve cases that were more than two years old. Believe it or not, and we charge a flat fee, a lot of people charge a flat fee. It is in our interest to resolve cases sooner, quickly, more efficiently. So if you have someone that's not doing that, get a second opinion, look around. But this case had lasted about over a year and a half. And I called this lady and I went over her case. When I first called her, she was depressed. She was, you know, I don't know what you can do for me. You're very sad, um, lethargic. And I said, look, I went over your numbers. This is all we need from you. The IRS is going to, they need pay stubs. This time they were requesting pay stubs on everything. I said, look, send me your last three pay stubs. I'm going to expedite this and I'll call. And she goes, well, how long will it take you? I said, a week. You get it to me, I'll be on the phone in a week. I had her case wrapped up in a month and she was thrilled when she said, oh, someone's going to actually work my case. Her right. attitude, her demeanor changed and we had it wrapped up in a very short time period. But this whole year and a half, she thought, oh, I paid somebody and you guys didn't do anything for me. Another funny story, and I, I could tell stories all day long. This guy was not responding to us. Couldn't. We sent him letters, texts, emails. And you, you need a company that will communicate, that will send out texts, emails, call. We, we do everything we can to communicate. And this guy drove from Texas. He was a t- truck driver. And I was in Sacramento at the time. Drove from Texas to Sacramento to meet with me. Came in, had a briefcase full of IRS letters and all of our letters that were all unopened. Wow. So we're like, we've been trying. Yeah. We had a great meeting. We sat down. It's like, this is what we need from you. But, you know, he was a Spanish speaker, but we, you know, I speak Spanish. My staff spoke Spanish. I was like, look, this is what we need. Respond to our calls. Open your letters. If you don't get it, call us. We'll explain it. We'll walk you through it. And we were able to resolve this case successfully. But up until then, that line of communication was not open. It's an interesting one. And I think it's a, it, it, it's a sign of the times for sure where that multi-communication channel has become so great. You know, like some people are great with phones, some people text, voicemails, or, you know, everyone's different. And so if you're, if you're not working to, towards what the client deals with, well, you, you know, maybe they're A, not a client for you. And I'm kind of speaking just from a, a bit general business philosophy they might not be the right client or if you can adjust and have multiple forms of communication you increase customer satisfaction and and you are able to impact people's businesses far greater like you've got multi language you've got multi text phone fax letters you know you're you're increasing the likelihood of success absolutely wonderful hubert this has been absolutely great we we kind of went on uh we didn't hit many many of the questions that i had but we uh we had just absolute gold uh some real content that i think will help our listener and i think just listening to you being able to get more access like more educated about the things that you're talking about through your show so maybe give it to us again where the if people wanted to learn more and, and listen to some of your content like already in 30 minutes, we've gotten a lot of stuff that they could be talking about with their clients, you know, sending out information to their clients, be being valuable around some really, really big deal stuff. Where would they go to do that? Well, our website is guardiantaxlaw.com. I have a blog. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. I have videos posted up there. The daily show that I do is on smartmoneyculture.tv, and it's from... Um, 7 to 8 Mountain Standard Time. The show's actually broadcast in portions of Texas and Louisiana, um, but you can always get online and see the show as well. Um, And if you have complicated questions, I mean, we deal with much more complicated cases as well, DOJ, foreign assets, et cetera. We, We play with a lot of fun stuff. Call us. We would love to hear from bookkeepers, and we give out free advice all the time. Just give us a call, 520-485-7371. Beautiful. Hubert, this has been absolutely uh, a pleasure conversation. I've learned a heap of things, and I know our listener has as well. I want to thank you for your generosity in coming on the show and sharing it with us. Yeah. Beautiful. My pleasure. Well, the pleasure is all ours, and uh, I'm glad that you're 
you enjoyed yourself as well. And with that, we wrap another episode of the Successful Bookkeeper Podcast to learn more about today's wonderful guest and to get access to all sorts of valuable free business building resources, you can go to thesuccessfulbookkeeper.com. Until next time, goodbye. You've been listening to The Successful Bookkeeper with Michael Palmer. For more information and to download the resources mentioned in this episode, please visit us at thesuccessfulbookkeeper.com. Thank you for listening.